book ever. Once our institution and all of us that work in it, the teaching staff, the librarians, <coughs> the technicians, the researchers, um, the, the administrative staff, everybody in there, existed to provide broad-based teaching, learning and research experiences. Ones that would lead to human, scientific, social and economic progress. Huge, huge task. But we did all of it. Now do you know what happened? The government says you will contribute to one thing and one thing alone, and that is economic progress. They have reduced New Zealand society in all its diversity down to the economy, and I think we need to take some action to address that. So, what do we do? What are we going to say? Well, we need to point out why we've had this happen to us, because we, only when we know the problem can we actually start to address it. The first is that the government, successive governments have imposed free market ideals on our institutions. And the millions of dollars spent in advertising is a clear example of what marketisation does. It's not the only example. But you might want to, when you give this speech, say, look what our institution spends on advertising. Imagine if they spent that on the library. Imagine if they spent that on core services for students. You know, imagine if they spent it on teaching programs. The other is that over the successive decades we've now had the creation of the single sector and I spoke about these things yesterday briefly. What that means is actually we're, we've taken away the diversity of the sector and the government is steering all of the money towards one end and that is degree based programs and that strips money from foundation courses, from trade, from anything that is not about teaching you know, bachelors of commerce and administration to people. Now we need BCAs just as much as we need trades training and we need foundation skills. But the current strategic thinking <coughs> in the sector doesn't appreciate the diversity. The third is actually probably the most dramatic in New Zealand. More than any other country in the world, the government has said it will steer the sector. And that's the word that uses. Tech, the Tertiary Education Commission, is charged to be the proactive steerer of this sector. And the interesting thing is when you read their documentation, apparently we all agree that they're steering the sector in the right way. <laughs> apparently we agree that the tertiary education strategy as it's set out right now is accurate, is the direction we think the sector should go in. So I think we need to push back and say this is not the direction. This isn't what we want. This isn't what is good for our community. And we can show that. But we need to be careful. We need to make clear that we are not saying that the government should let us spend money willy-nilly without any accountability. One of the things that said is needed is more efficiency and more um, efficient use of the, the money put into the sector. We're taxpayers too. We want the government's money spent well because it's our money as well. We don't want it spent frivolously. So we need to be careful to say we're not against taxpayers' money being spent well. We just don't think the government is spending it well at the moment. The other thing we have to be careful about, and this is more problematic in the university sector, I will acknowledge that, and the example is definitely the university. We are not harking back to some mythical past. We need to be very careful about that. There was no great mythical past when universities were the fantastic spaces for all. New Zealand had a very elitist model of universities in the 1950s, 60s and 70s. It excluded many people. It, and they weren't those places. I mean, you know, the, the image that I've used in the paper is the tweed jacketed professor walking around imparting their great wisdom on the multitude. Male. Male. Always male, yes. And, and you know, eager minds sitting around debating whether Kant was right about the, you know, the meaning of existence or whether Einstein's theory of relativity was right or wrong. Now that may have been true for some people, but it wasn't true for most New Zealanders. So we, you know, let's not spend our whole time saying it was much better in 1960 when I first joined. You know, who cares? The world's moved on. That's what we'll be told. So we do need to be careful about how we put this forward. We need to talk about the future the future for New Zealand, the future for, ch for the next generation of learners. But we do need to assert very, very loudly, very, very clearly, the government is steering us in the wrong direction entirely. And the wrong direction is this idea that the only thing that matters is that 
we as a sector help to drive and enhance New Zealand's economic growth performance and raise labour productivity. That's a quote from the Ministry of Education. That's what they're telling the Minister we're here to do. <laughs> Two things, economic growth, labour market productivity. We are much more than that. And they're saying we have to be more business-like. Tertiary education is not a business and it should be efficient in the way it uses money. But business-like? Well, it means all those non-economic courses can be chucked out. Non-economic courses mean courses that aren't getting funding from the government. What's getting funding from the government? Degree. Non-economic courses are bridging programs and they are closing throughout the country and that means students aren't getting the opportunity to learn, to go into education. Um, Non-economic is any student over the age of 25. If you read the strategy, it says, hey, the only people worth investing in are 18 to 25 year olds. The rest of you, who cares? Why do they say that? Because over your lifetime, if you train at 18, you'll pay more taxes over your lifetime. Is that the only reason we do education? You know, is that the only reason? And I think in a labour market and a society where we have to continually change skills, actually excluding people who are... I mean, I started at 25. I've, I've struggled to get into university now. You know, if it was today. They probably would exclude me because I left school at 17. I hadn't done UE. I'd done OK at school, but I'd gone away and I'd worked. I went back. I went back because I wanted to change careers. I did. I ended up as an academic. It wasn't where I was heading, but it's what I became passionate about. You know, like, you know, there's a whole lot of women out there who took time out with families. Are we saying they don't deserve a chance? There are a whole lot of people for whom school was a disaster. But at 30, they go, I need to do more. Are we saying they don't deserve a chance? Well, the government is saying that to us. We need to tell them they're wrong. And we need to give them examples of why. Also, the government wants more bang for its buck. We all know that. Rising numbers of student to every staff member, very problematic. Very problematic. And you need to find examples from your own institutions that show how problematic that is. MIT gave us one example, which was the, the, the plumbing classes, the two classes, two groups of 12, normally. Combined together, because staff had been made redundant, there weren't enough staff to teach the class, is that right? And they became a, a class of 24. In a workshop for 16. Benches for 16 students, but 24 people. That's not good teaching and learning, and it's also a health and safety issue. We do need to say this loud. So you need to find examples from your own institutions. The other thing I think we need to say very loudly is the government is ignoring the very legislation that enacts our institution. The Education Act says we, as a community, are the critical conscience of the society. We have a role in creating good citizens. Not good economic actors, good citizens. And, and we have a requirement to contribute to broad social environmental and economic development goals. The government is only picking the last one. We need to remind them about that piece of legislation. We need to tell them that they are cutting across what actually is important in this sector. So again, you need to go back to your institutions and find examples of where academics are good citizens and say this is what we want and this is what we're generating for the next range of students that are coming through. So, we need to do that. We need to go back, we need to think about our institutions in this framework. The other thing we need to do is we need to actually focus back on what is needed for the 21st century. And these words spring to mind for me and you may have others. That this society, with all its complex needs, the world we live in is very complex, there are many issues we need to deal with, needs a vibrant, diverse, creative and dynamic tertiary education sector and the government is killing that vibrant, dynamic, creative and diverse and I think the diversity is really important, the diverse sector. We need to tell them to give it back to us. So, we need them to restore to us a range of policies that enable us to be more than part of the economy, to be part of the society. It is going to be good for us as staff for our students, for their families, for our communities and for New Zealand. We need to make sure that teaching and learning considerations 
are weighted as being more important, or at least as important as economic considerations. Because I think at the moment the only thing they consider is the economic and not the educational. And I think that's important. We need to reassert that the benefits from getting a tertiary qualification, and we all know this, because general staff and academic staff and universities and polytechnics and Wānanga and other spaces and all the REITs and OTEPs, we've all, we're all got the chance to have an education. We know it's transformative. We need them to know that there is much more than money at stake in an education. And this is the hard sell, and I tried to sell it to a young group of lawyers recently, not around tertiary education, around po uh, child poverty. And we need to convince our families, our friends, our colleagues, that they will have to give back those tax cuts. Those of us on high income, and that's most of us in the tertiary sector, not all of us. Top income earners will have to give back those tax cuts because the hard message is the government doesn't want to put more money in, but we need them to, and New Zealand needs them to. So, how do I know this is the direction? How do we know this is the direction? Well, the final part of the puzzle. Because we are the professionals, the librarians, the technicians, the teachers, the researchers, the tutors, the trades trainers, the administrators, we are the professionals in the tertiary education sector. We know what is good for our sector. The government needs to listen to that message. New Zealand needs to listen to it. And that's the final part of the puzzle. If the government is going to steer this ship, this market, they should do it on good advice, on our advice. And they should listen. So we have to stand up for the autonomy of our sector. We have to stand up and speak loudly or sing loudly. There are some song sheets about to be handed out. <laughs> in every seminar, end with something. My thing is song and everybody groans, but end with a tale that people can take away that will live with them long beyond the seminar, long beyond what you have to say to them. That is the script that will be available for anyone to use, to change, to make their own. We're going to sing. I think we're going to clap. Education at every opportunity. <laughs>